Graphing Linear Inequalities from Standard Form For this video lesson, we will set aside the graphing calculator and use plain old-fashioned graph paper. A linear inequality in standard form looks very much like an equation in standard form. Here we have the equation 3x minus 4y equals 12 and the inequality 3x minus 4y is greater than 12. The only distinction between these two relationships is the symbol of equality in this case of an equation it's an equal sign in the case of an inequality it's the inequality symbol in this case greater than in an equation we are solving for a line but in an inequality we are solving for a boundary line because the line we graph is a boundary on one side of the line are the solutions and on the other side of the line there are no solutions in this inequality the shaded area above the red line is the set of solutions and the unshaded area below the line contains no solutions. Since the boundary line is solid, that line is also part of the solution set. We need to find the equation of the boundary line. We need to draw in a solid line or a dashed line. And a dashed line is where the line does not include the solutions. Let's graph this linear inequality, 3x minus 4y is greater than 12. When I get ready to graph, I like to call it not equal to, but greater than, but we'll get to that a little later. I like to graph lines in standard form by finding the x and y intercepts. To find the x-intercept of this boundary line, we can cover the y term with our thumb and see what's left. We have 3x is greater than 12, covering the y term, so we can write that off to the side on the right. We divide both sides by 3 and get x is greater than 4. We mark the x-intercept at x equals 4. We solve for the y-intercept by covering up the x term. What's left is negative 4y is greater than 12. But will it be greater than? Not so fast. When we solve an inequality by dividing by a negative number, we need to change the direction of the inequality symbol. So it will be y is less than negative 3. Now we draw in a point at the y-intercept of negative 3. With the x and y-intercepts drawn, we are ready to draw the boundary line. For inequalities, there are two kinds of boundary lines, a solid line representing equal to, and a dashed line when the boundary line is not part of the solution set. Since this inequality is less than, this will be a dashed line. We draw a dashed line using these two points. And since the sign is less than, which way do we shade? Less than means down or below, so we shade below the boundary line. So this is the graph of 3x minus 4y is greater than 12. And lastly, I believe in checking because it's easy to make a mistake with a sign or something like that. Remember if we had forgotten to change that uh, sign when we divide by a negative number? So I like picking the point 0 comma 0 at the origin because the math is so easy. So mark the point 0 comma 0, substitute 0 for x and 0 for y in our original inequality. That gives us 0 is greater than 12. Is 0 greater than 12? No, 0 is less than 12. So therefore the point 0 comma 0 is not in the solution set or inside the shaded area. And since uh, we have that area unshaded, we have actually shaded correctly by shading below that boundary line. Check. Let's look at this other inequality. 5x plus 6y is greater than or equal to negative 30. Again, we use the thumb to cover the y term. That leaves us with 5x is greater than or equal to negative 30. We solve for x by dividing both sides of the inequality by 5 to get x by itself. So x is greater than or equal to negative 6. We mark the x-intercept on the x-axis at negative 6. We now need to find the y-intercept and start that by covering up the x term. That leaves us with 6y is greater than or equal to negative 30. We solve for the y-intercept by dividing both sides by 6 so that y is equal to and greater than negative 5. We mark the y-axis at negative 5. Using the x and y intercepts, we draw a line. What kind of line? Well, it's a solid line since the symbol is equal to and greater than. 
And since it's greater than, which way is greater than? Up is greater than, so we shade upward from this boundary line. Finally, we mark a point on the graph, and we're going to use the point 0, 0 to test. Since both x and y are 0 for this point, that gives us 0 is greater than or equal to negative 30. Is that correct? Yes, 0 is in fact greater than or equal to negative 30 because it's in the shaded area and it's part of the solution set. We shaded right, check. Let's look at this one. Negative 8x plus 7y is greater than 56. Remember that when it comes to graphing, it's helpful to say not equal to but greater than so we keep in mind the type of boundary line we need to draw before we even shade. Stop the video. I recommend getting out some graph paper and trying this one yourself. When you're finished, restart the video to see how you did. First, cover the y term. That leaves us with negative 8x is greater than 56. We solve for x by dividing both sides by negative 8. 56 divided by negative 8 equals negative 7. But since we divided by a negative number, the sign will switch so we have x is less than negative 7. So we place a point on the x-axis at the x value of negative 7. Now we solve for the y-intercept by covering the x term. That leaves us with 7y is not equal to but greater than 56. We finally solve for y by dividing both sides of the inequality by 7. So since 56 divided by 7 is 8, we have y is greater than 8. Did we divide by a negative number to solve for y? No, since we did not, we don't have to switch around the sign this time. Now we mark the y-intercept. Here we draw the line. It's a dashed line since it's not equal to but greater than. And since it's greater than, we need to shade which way? Upwards. Now we finally check the point 0, 0, to see if it's a solution. Since it's in the unshaded area, it should not be in the solution set. To substitute back into our original inequality for 0, 0, that gives us negative 8 times 0 plus 7 times 0 on the left. That gives us 0 is greater than 56. Is 0 greater than 56? No. So since the point 0, 0 is in the unshaded region, that proves that we have shaded correctly. Check. Let's look at graphing this inequality, 2x minus 9y is less than 18. For purposes of graphing, I would like to call it 2x minus 9y is not equal to but less than 18. Stop the video. I recommend getting out again some graph paper and trying this one yourself. When you're finished, restart the video to see how you did. First we solve for the x-intercept by covering the y term. That leaves us with 2x is not equal to, but less than, 18. We find the x-intercept by dividing by 2. So since 18 divided by 2 is 9, our x-intercept is 9. We mark the x-intercept of 9 on the x-axis. Now we find the y-intercept by hiding or covering the x term. That gives us negative 9y is less than 18. We find our y-intercept by dividing by negative 9, and since 18 divided by negative 9 is negative 2, our y-intercept is negative 2. To solve for y, we ask again the question, did we divide by a negative number? Yes, we did. So we switch the direction of the inequality symbol. Now we mark the y-intercept at negative 2. Now we draw the boundary line. What type of boundary line? Since it's greater than that would be a dashed line. Which way do we shade? Well, greater than means up, so we shade above this dashed boundary line. All that remains to do is check to see that we have shaded correctly. Using a 0, 0, again, we replace x with 0 and y with 0, so we have 2 times 0 minus 9 times 0. Is a 0 less than 18? Yes. And since a 0, 0 is inside the shaded area, or shaded region of the graph, we know that we have shaded correctly. Check. To summarize, first find the x and y intercepts by covering the y and x terms respectively, then solve for the x-intercept, and then the y-intercept, then mark the intercepts. Then draw the boundary line, dashed for not equal to, which would be for a less than or greater than inequality symbol, 
and solid for equal to. Now shade above or below, depending on uh, greater than is above and less than would be below that boundary line. Finally, use a point to check if the correct area was shaded. 0, 0, is usually the best coordinate to check since the calculations are really easy. This has been Graphing Linear Inequalities from Standard Form. Thanks for viewing.